Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. Today we will see how we can set up a unified Netcore controller on a Raspberry Pi. We will use a Raspberry Pi in order to run Unify controller instead of a cloud key. In order to do so, we need to install Raspbian on our Raspberry Pi. We can download the latest version from the Raspberry site. Since we will not use the desktop, light version is enough. Press the download button and wait until download is finished. This may take some minutes depending on your internet speed. Once download is finished, we use a software to write the image to the SD card. In my case, I am using Etcher. Select the image, the SD card and press flash. Once finished, reinsert the SD card in order to mount it again. Then open a terminal and go to volumes slash boot. And there create an empty file named SSH. With this action, we have enabled SSH access to our Raspberry without the need of a monitor. Now, we need to insert our SD card to the Raspberry Pi and connect it to the network. Next, we need connect via SSH. The default password for PI user is Raspberry. Once connect, run the command sudo up get update. In some case, this command may fail to be completed. In this case, run it again. Now we need to copy the URL where we can find the Unify Controller software package. Search for Unify Controller and then select the latest version for Linux. Select it and press download. Accept it and press copy URL. Then we need to navigate to a folder where we will download the Unify controller. In our case, we will use the usr slash local slash src folder by using the relevant cd command. Then use the command sudo wget and the path in order to download Unify controller. Once the download is finished, use the command sudo dpkg-i and the name of the file we have already downloaded in order to install it. As you can see, the installation failed due to missing dependent software. Run command sudo apt-get install-f in order to install the missing software. As you can see, this will take around 300 megabytes of space. This will take some time to be completed.
when it finished, we need to run command sudo service unify status in order to start unify controller. As you can see, it isn't started due to a problem with Java. There are several ways to solve this problem, but the easiest way is to run the following command. sudo apt get install open jdk minus 8 minus jdk this needs additional 708 megabytes once this is completed we need to try again to start unify controller This time we succeed. Unify controller is started. In order to access it, we need to use our browser and navigate to the IP address assigned to the Raspberry at port 8443, which is the default port for the Unify controller. Also, we need to use HTTPS and of course accept the risk. That's it, Unify controller is running in our Raspberry. At this point, we can either configure our controller from scratch or use an existing backup in order to restore it. In case we select to configure it from scratch, we need first to give it a name and then to log in using our Ubiquiti credentials. In case we select to restore it from a backup file, we need to select the file and wait until the controller restarts. Then we need to log in using our Ubiquiti credentials and as you can see our Unify controller is ready to be used. More details for the Unify controller and how to use it will come on next video. Thank you for watching this video, if you find it useful, please press like and consider subscribe. See you the next episode with more Unify.